Good morning everybody, how are you? Welcome to Midweek Makes. Um, I'm still preparing, still getting ready. Uh, good morning Laurie, Laurie you're always there first. <laughs> I love it. Um, good morning Laurie, Helena how are you? Lynn Harrison, good morning. Um, Elaine Hunt and Nova Blackburn, I hope you're all well. Simone, good morning to you. Um, let's just pop over to Facebook. Julie, Julie you should be getting your uh, should you get your cards today? Maybe tomorrow you should be getting those. Uh, it's a lovely morning. It's really sunny here. Hi, Vicky. Um, I have got your email, Vicky. I will respond to that when things just calm down a little <laughs> a little bit. Uh, should be today anyway. Um, how are you all doing? Hello, Karen. Hope you're well. Um, it, has it been a good week so far? Now the weather seems to be realising that it's actually summer. Um is it making you feel a bit more a bit brighter i'm certainly definitely i i you know my mood goes with the weather so we're doing gel plate printing today um i'm not really sure what we're going to do except i'm going to use the snowflakes because i think it would make a really nice a uh, pretty snowflake background because i did a poll on facebook uh and this was last week maybe after the after last week's live and asking what people would like to see most so i put a few examples and i left it open for other people to add their own comments and um, gel plate printing came out on top as well as mixed media well of course you can combine the two so we're just going to do some gel plate pr printing today and see where it takes us what we end up with so I'm just uh, while I was waiting for this to start I was just die cutting some snowflakes ready to use as like little stencils and masks I've die cut two layers of copy paper here so that's why I'm being really careful with it because it's very thin and also I need to peel them apart now I've got the doors open so you probably just heard that loud motorbike go past can you all hear me today because I've got a new microphone and it, it's a bit quiet I kind of have to have it quite close to me I can turn the volume up on it but I don't want to on the other hand deafen anybody uh, hi Sarah Pick hope you're well Julie Thomas Sam good morning are we all are we all okay right so let's just make sure i've not missed anybody let's pop to youtube so i'm on both facebook and youtube so whichever wherever you prefer to watch uh katarina good morning yeah you never seem to catch these live this morning's a lazy one Do you know what? i was just saying to sam i've had a lazy morning usually i'm up um i go for a run every other morning so that's you know but i'm always up at the same time out of bed by six sort of up by five cup of tea then out of bed by six breakfast shower blah 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 this morning i stayed in bed until nearly eight o'clock and i was just browsing my phone as you do pinterest my best friend and then um, my daughter wanted to make some sort of scrambled egg avocado type breakfast so uh, i talked her into doing two lots so i had some of that as well and we set up our new breakfast bar in the kitchen and um, yeah, it's been a lovely, relaxing morning, but now it's time to crack on with some work. Okay, so I've got some some um, snowflakes die cut ready. We've got stamps. We can try stamping onto the gel plate. Oh, I don't know where that's come from, but we could use it later on. We can do, I've got a magazine here. We can try a bit of magazine um, print resist. So uh, Francisca, good morning. Carol Clark, how are you? Stacey for Stacey's Creations. Good morning, everybody. What a fantastic day it is today. The wee boy has been, has oh, has gone back to school already. So that means I get to do some crafting piece with no Jack running after Jack. No Jack running after Jack. <laughs> Happy days. <laughs> Um, sounds okay, brilliant, lovely. Um, chasing after your kids to brush their teeth. Oh, I don't miss those days. Now I just leave them to it. If they don't brush their teeth, when we go to the dentist, they get told off. Not my problem. <laughs> Not taking responsibility for them at their ages now. Um, okay, so let's just put these away and let's get started. I have got my textures gel plate. If you've not seen this before, um, it's I've had it a few years now it's available only at craft stash now I've had quite a few comments about people when they first get them they don't work as well as mine it's because you do need to prime a gel plate and the only way to do that really is to use it just use it use it use it paint on it don't always wash it just keep layering paints and inks on it and using it pulling off again and eventually you'll find it will just it will just work really really well 
I don't know what it is. I, whether it's a, it's not just this gel plate, it just goes for all gel plates. Once they're used, they work so much better. You kind of have to work them in. So it is the textures one. Um, let's just, yeah, lazy slow mornings are the best. They are, but I feel like I've not achieved anything. Usually I've got so much, I've already sort of filmed a video or two by now. So, right, let's pop that aside. So this is an, uh, a five, is it five by seven? Yeah, five by seven gel plate. Just check it wasn't A5. Uh, a five by seven gel plate. Um, you can get it in a bundle with the brayer as well. Again, the brayer too, I don't worry about cleaning too much. I quite like if there's bits on there, I quite like the texture that I get. Now with gel plates, you've got to accept you're never going to get perfect impressions. I think once you overcome that and think, okay, whatever happens, happens. If there's distress marks in them and little bits in them, bits missed, if you're happy with that and you're settled with that, then you'll do brilliantly with a gel plate. Now you can use gel plates with acrylic paints. So any sort of, I, I, these are sort of my favorites because they're inexpensive, but they're a nice quality and you get a lot in the tubes and the colors are really vivid. So uh, these are my favorite acrylic paints to use, but over the past six months or so, I've been using Distress Oxides on my gel plate. And you know what, it's a game changer. The cleanup is a hundred times less um and they're just they just work <laughs> like they, they're lovely the effects are beautiful um let me just see just make sure i've not missed any comments here lovely okay so shall we just do now i'm just using copy paper by the way mine's a bit dog-eared but it doesn't matter because i never go right to the edge um i will just cut these in half though so when I say copy paper, I mean printer paper, the really inexpensive paper that you use in your printer. If you're wanting to do things like card fronts, you can use like a watercolour card stock, something like that, and press print onto that. Absolutely fine. But I will do 10, 15, 20, 30 pulls in a play session. Um, so I don't want to be using my expensive card stock for that. But if you do want to use a card stock for a card front, I strongly suggest this one because it's a uh, watercolour cardstock. It's a bright white. A lot of watercolour cardstocks have that ivory tone to them and they have a lot of texture. This is watercolour, so it's going to hold your waters and your mediums and things, but it is smooth and it's bright white. So it's going to match your card bases as well when you layer them on top and do your mats and layers and things. So this is ideal. Uh, I believe it's still in stock at Craft Stash. Again, I've pinned a link, so everything I'm showing you is available at Craft Stash. So it might be a good idea to have a play with your print, so when you get one you like, then recreate it onto a, a stronger cardstock if you're doing a card with it. Alternatively, if you're on YouTube, you follow me on there, um, I do have a video and that shows you how to uh, how I use my scrap. So I literally took three print pulls, gel plate print pulls, and uh, I made three cards with them and they're really quick. So using the scraps and cuts from each. So uh, you'll find that on my YouTube channel as well. Um, I never knew that Lou, that you can use inks. Yes, okay, okay. So for those of you who have never, oh, excuse the noise today. We've still got the builders up the road. I'm not worried, I'm not worried. So yes, you can still use, you can use oxides on your plate. So let's do that for you first of all. Let's go uh, Cedars Preserves. Cool, they are noisy today. Dusty Concord. Should we go my favorite? Uncharted Mariner. We are rattling through the oxide. Wow, that's noisy. I apologize everyone, hopefully. Usually we get a few minutes of that and then it all goes quiet again. So just smooched onto my mat. I'm going to take my brayer and I'm just going to just run this through, going in the direction that I want the blend and then come back down and see how it all smooths out. Now some people say they don't get this smooth line um, when the gel plate's new. It kind of pulls a little bit and this is where you just need to keep, keep doing it. Keep using it. Don't wash it. Don't clean it. Just keep layering inks and paints on. Pull them off. Put more on mediums medium gels as well play with those there we go look at the texture look at that there's little creases and lines and i just love it now i'm not going to be um i'm not going to do you know what let's do this actually let's just show you what happens if you don't want that color say i wanted to go from this i wanted to do green and yellow on my next one so rather than clean the mat i'm going to pull again but because this is distress oxide i'm going to put 
some ink splats on there. Sorry, water splats. Water splats. Just splat some water. Let that react for a moment. And let's pull a little bit more off of here. You can see I've got wet hands as well. Let's see what we get. Now you can use your brayer as well. That's one thing I was going to do. I was going to take down my mat. is just to protect my wood effect mat underneath. There we go. Just spray that all over. I tend to use my fingers, but I want to show you all the different ways of doing it. There we go. We've got watercolour splats as well. So first pull, really solid colour. You can do this effect on here as well if you want to. Um, and yeah, I'm left with, I'm getting to virtually no colour on there really. There's a little bit. You can wipe it, so wet wipes, but definitely. I'm going to show you these. Now, these are a brand. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll cover the brand name over. You will know, oh, look, I didn't do a very good job of that, did I? What we're looking at is the pure and the 99% pure water. You don't want any alcohol within your wipes, okay? Whatever wet wipes you choose to use, you just want the water-based ones, the ones that are gentle on baby's skin because they're ideal for being gentle on your gel plate as well. Okay, is that all making sense, everybody? Has anyone got any questions? Let me just pop over to uh, Bookface as well. Make sure I'm not missing anybody. Hello, Caroline. How are you? Hi, Sandra Simpy. Good morning. Carla. Oh, Carla, come on. She bought the Brayer bundle and she's not used them yet. Well, I'm disappointed, Carla. Come and get them out. Go and do it now. Um, you only use yours for mirror image stamping, to be honest. I know a lot of people do that. And somebody did comment that they'd like to see that as well, actually. So maybe we can do that today as well. Um, good morning, Kobe. Uh, go Matildas. Uh, did they win? Is it this morning? I'm not sure what time it was. Oh, dear. Kobe, I don't think you'll be very popular here today if they did. <laughs> I'm not sure. The women's football. I totally forgot that was this morning. I'm not a football fan, to be honest, I must admit, so I'm not sure. Don't worry, Carla. Hopefully you'll pick up some tips today. Um, yeah, was it... So was it Lions or was it Matildas? Who won? Let me know, somebody. Kobe, I'm sure you know by the sounds of it. Not sure if I want the um, book face. Yes, I call it book face. That's just something I've done for years, Simone. You are right, Carol Passy? Hayley Preston, good morning. Okay, so we've done two gel pulls. If you're just joining us, we've just done two. Now let's start adding resists and inks and things. So let's go with some lovely blues and greens. Let's get a bit more wintry with these. So I'm going to go from salvage patina into peacock feathers, into salty ocean. And I'm not worried about contamination on my ink pads because there's, they're so juicy that the inks will just uh, come off. They'll just mix really nicely. Now, these are quite similar. Mermaid Lagoon, Salty Ocean. They're not too dissimilar. So, again, I'm just going to brush that around. I haven't got a scrap of paper for cleaning my brayer off, which is something I will do. You can go and wash everything under the sink when you finished your complete session but I personally prefer to leave everything quite mucky until the very end now bear with me because somewhere here I've got a plate that's not it I'm still here I'm just trying to find something oh come on you were here a minute ago um where are you I can't find it I'll have to take another gel plate I'm just going to take another gel plate and put it underneath my paper just so that when I squish, when I clean my brayer, I've got something to squish into and it just cleans it a little bit better. I was looking for my media plate. See, I've left that on there for a little while. That's not a problem. It's not an issue. So what I'm going to do now is these snowflakes that I was die cutting earlier when we first started, I'm going to press them down into the ink. Tweezers or a pokey tool are going to be ideal here as long as you don't damage the surface of your uh, gel plate with them. Just so you don't get fingerprints in there. But do you know what? If you've not got anything to put into your gel plate, put a handprint in there. You know, get some bubble wrap, some corrugated card. Just have a play with all the different things that you can be 
pressing into your inks or your paints if you chose to do paints cannot live with it not being popular game starts in about oh in about an hour i knew it was this morning i wasn't sure what time it started though the way you were saying go matildas i thought they'd won i'm getting ahead of myself well may the best women win <laughs> i'm not competitive at all i'm not really um, so will you be watching it then, Kobe? What time is it there for you? So I'm going to do this. I'm going to press into my snowflakes in. I'm going to do my water as well. And that's, of course, just going to go around the ink. It's not really going to have much reaction where the uh, snowflakes are. And then let's do a print. Let's dry my hands off. I have got mucky trousers on today. It doesn't matter if I dry my hands on my trousers. And let's press these down. So these are my new snowflakes from the Snow Flurry collection that I launched the other week. Now when you're doing prints like this, you just want to make sure you're pressing into the detail. To be honest, you can probably, you might be able to just see those a little bit. Make sure we're getting everywhere. Okay, this is where your fingertips come in handy. Shall we see what we're looking at? There we go. Gorgeous. Love that. And then, <clears throat> just going to, so obviously this is copy paper and it's wet, so you're not likely to use these again, but you can. You see these? I could cut them out. I could put them onto a project once they're dry. Let's just gen try and gently lift these off, but they are quite fine. Definitely make sure you're not poking your tweezers into the gel plate or your pokey tool if you're using one. There we go. Whoop. Okay, let's take another piece. Press this down. You're in Perth. Oh, it starts just after 5 p.m. for you. Oh, of course, yeah, you're ahead. I was thinking you're behind us. You're ahead of us, aren't you? I think the game starts at 8.30 Sydney time, 6 p.m. Perth time. Not long. <laughs> Sandra, your daughter always seems to phone during a live. You can't not listen to her. I know. I know. My, my children actually yesterday, well, I hope she's soon feeling better and things improve for her, Sandra. Um... My children yesterday, I my husband went out to watch a football match locally. He's very much into football. Hang on, just do this. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? If you want a subtle background, so again, first pull, second pull. You could take these and you could then lay them back over, stagger them if you wanted to, and get some really nice effects. You could shop and change you know what? I've got the every lorry this is a tiny road every lorry wants to come down here this morning you could layer these up and make a really nice pretty background I love this effect love this effect um yeah yesterday both my both my children decided that that was the time that they were going to come down and talk to me when I sat down with a glass of something that had a little bit of alcohol in it and they decided they wanted to come and have a chat individually one after the other and I was like you never want to talk to me and now I've got time I'm not complaining at all but now I've got time to myself right so I had an idea I was just grabbing my things together and I found this brush that I've obviously used um, in some paint somewhere not cleaned and it's got really stiff bristles and I wondered whether I could make some sort of wood grain effect with it on my gel plate I'm not sure completely might not happen might not work so I'm going to try try it out with you so I'm just going to drag I put iced spruce down first uh, then vintage photo and then let's go with a let's go with a walnut stain as well and we'll see what happens so I'm thinking, there we go, I'm thinking use this and just drag it down 
I wonder if I can like do a we'll see should we see what that looks like I'm hoping for wood grain but it might look nothing like it we'll have a play uh, Simone, loving watching the women's football. So much more enjoyable than the men's. Less diving and rolling around in agony after a light tap. Irish ladies are out, so I was cheering on the Swedish and the English. Ah, oh, brilliant. Yeah, I know. I We do watch a lot of local football, and sometimes I'm like, oh, just get up, really. Because as soon as the ref calls a free kick or penalty or whatever, all of a sudden they jump up and they're fine. Like, oh, you big tart. <laughs> My husband would have other things to say, but right, let's see what we got. Oh, wow. Okay. I think we can say that kind of worked for wood grain. Do you think? It even feels textured. I love that. Really, really pleased with that. That would look nice as a wintry background, wouldn't it? Maybe pop some, some of these snowflakes on there as well. That'd be gorgeous 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 do you know what there's also i need to say it there's something wintry but very special coming very soon from um at craft stash i can't wait and i can't tell you anymore should we stamp into our oxides as well should we do that let's see i'm just gonna do a complete mix of colors here i'm using all my favorite colors today as you can see uh, all the pinks and purples and let's just mix them up I don't I'm going purposely putting these marks in them I'm not going for smooth this time and then let's take my stamps now I had here it is I have this stamp what color let's go with um oh all the decisions do you know what let's not let's go with clear yeah looks looks good as a wood grain doesn't it quite pleased with that let me just pop over to youtube um what type of printing is uh this is the sort of printing you saw a few days ago and someone else decided to get a gel plate and a brayer next time i buy something definitely go for the textures one Katerina, definitely go for the textures one. All right, so now you can do stamping in two ways. You can do stamping where you add ink or you can do stamping where you take it away. And that is like this. Okay, so I'm just going to wipe it. So obviously you want to wipe it. And get one of my water-based wipes out. You can just use a squirt of water. It wants to be quite dry. If it's not dry, and it's got too much moisture on it it's just going to pull uh, add to the ink add moisture to it it's not quite the same effect let's do all over oh that one didn't go very well I don't think I don't I'm not sure I don't think it went very well that one but do you know what are we worried This is a very thin acrylic block. I actually got it when I used to do brush lettering for putting ink onto. But I find it really handy for stamping because it's so thin you can put a really nice pressure down on different parts of the stamp. You know if you have a bigger stamp and it doesn't always stamp perfectly. Sometimes that just works better. Let's also take a small stamp and pop these one there, one there, um, I haven't got a lot of space actually, I don't think I'm going to do any more. Let's lift this first and see what we've got, oh look, I've splattered water onto my wood grain. Do you know what, at the end of the day it's a bit of ink and it's, um, it's a bit of ink and it's copy paper. Stacey Lou, do you know how to do the techniques? Yeah, I'm going to do that in a minute, my love. Never tried it. Is there a print you have to use? Hang on. I've got a love heart sign right where your comment is. Is there a, oh, a prime you have to use beforehand? I'll show you in a moment. Because you can do it with oxides. All right, okay. Da -da 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 -da. 
let's see so this is just stamping into the ink you see the ink sits there and doesn't dry you've got loads of time to work for it alexandra hello i love to see all your oxide youtube videos now i start to use them lots more i don't have a gel plate so you need to buy it definitely it's fabulous if you're not very good at blending either this is a great way there we go look so let's look at the different ways we've used our snowflakes so far already we've got three different ways look so that is and i've still got i can still see an image on here so this way is the ink and then just a clean stamp into the ink pulling it off uh, this way was masking with some die cuts and that was the first impression and then we just did the sec peeled off those die cuts second impression we got that really nice light one so we're really starting to build up lots you could trim into these and patchwork them or something couldn't you really pretty so let's now do some stamping into this i'm just going to take let's just take this one where is my stamping block and a dark blue so as you've seen already you can quite easily pull again and you get the lighter effect so i'm going to stamp onto the plate here in a few places look how beautifully that stamps really nice and clear there we go let's do a little bit down in this corner and then let's lift these up now i'm not sure how much i'm going to get of the previous ink it might be ever so pale do you know how to do the technique oh sorry i've read that one already can you do it just with distress inks and oxides i don't have many of them inks yeah you can do it with inks as well i find oxides do hold a little bit better should we try the magazine transfer with inks then for those of you who don't have oxides same principle same techniques they when you roll the inks onto the plate they don't i just don't find they hold quite as well as oxides they pull a little bit more but we can have a go All right because i'm pulling the second print off of there from underneath there we go so we've got two layers there we've got the ones are stamped on and then we've got that background which is the second impression from that one so gorgeous okay so magazine prints now the back if you understand what's happening with magazine print it does make it much easier for you to work out why it's working okay so when i put paper onto any ink or paint and pull it off what happens the paper is soaking up the ink and the paint and then it's pulling it off okay um so it's absorbing into the paper when you have a magazine that has been printed with toner it's sitting on the paper and basically let me just find i just want a page that's got lots of text there you go let's use this this is just a high you want a glossy magazine ideally because if they're glossy then they're perfect now what's going to happen here and i am going to purposely tear this because this does give you some nice effects as well so what's happened here is the toner is sitting on top of the paper when you press your your magazine into your ink the toner is going to resist that ink soaking into the paper all the background is going to soak up some of the ink okay but the toner resists it so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense let's just get an ink bear with so i want to show you this way but i'll also show you with something else that you're more likely to have so this is um you can't see because I've all, I used to always store my foam applicator handles on top of my lids. This is the Distress Ink Black Soot. You really can't see anything on there. So let's put this on all over. So lot, you need quite a lot for this, especially if you're using ink. And again brayer it so it's nice and thin and even now i did leave 
as you saw I didn't clean my plate whoops I'm going to press my book page into here magazine page it can be images as well it doesn't have to be um, text I just love you know what I'm like I love text that's why my brand is called textures I'm just going to put this on here so I don't get mu even more mucky fingers and just lift off the excess from the edges so press them on right, so that's just taken those bits off the edges you see now making sure that's all pressed down really well what should have happened is the white page should have soaked up some of the ink and the text is left behind now, obviously you're not going to see that here right now I'm hoping shall we put this one back down I'll just put this one back down so it's clear we'll see if we can see it oh. I'm hoping you can see it I might have to do it with a bigger piece we shall see you can, oh, you can just about see it. I need to do it with something bigger. You can see the text there. Obviously, you're not going to make it out very clear because it's tiny, tiny little text. But it can be done. It can be done. So that's tiddly, tiny text, as you can see there. So I wouldn't expect to make it out. But it's getting there. Right, shall we find a better image? Now, I'm just going to have a hunt for something. Because I think this will work. But I need to find it. Ugh. Yes, now my textures papers oh let's find bear with me i just thought of a better one to show you i know this works really well this is sold out okay this is sold out so i apologize to those of you who think oh, i really want that paper but textures papers are made with toner okay this one has got lots of black spots so it's perfect for this um, image now what should we use should we go with my favorite we don't have to use black should we do it with oxides as well to show you where's black soot show you the oxides rather than the ink I still love that torn book page look anyway right so smooth that all over now, when you do this, you have to bear in mind that your page that you're pressing into isn't usually very usable after all. If that makes sense. It gets covered in black ink. Okay. So, this works so well with snowflakes. I know. It does, doesn't it? Just that sort of background. So, pressing down all over. And again, I've got that toner. I've got those butterflies with the toner that should resist. I haven't done this for ages with these papers. Hopefully you can see. I'm hoping it works now I've said that. I'm sure it will. Let's now get one of these. So this first one that we did, let's pop that. I can't see exactly where I'm putting it, so let's do it roughly. How are we doing? 35 minutes. I'm not actually making much today, am I? Oh. Pressing. Now this is where you really need to press in. Press down really hard. Make sure you pick up all those last bits of ink that's on there. Oh. I, I can see it. I think I had some black left on the plate from before. Can you see the butterflies in the background and the text on there as well? The trouble is I've got grey in the background. That's because this wasn't perfectly clean. So let's do similar, but let's clean the plate first. And then we'll do it onto white so you can really see it. So I said, I don't, I don't like cleaning my plate, but you see the difference when I wipe it there are techniques where you can use uh, packing tape when it's dry if all your ink and paint and that is really dry you can use packing tape to really pull that off not my preferred method because I worry about damaging the surface in fact I think trying that did damage the edges of my plate 
but if you're really desperate it's a possibility let's try I'm just wondering now I have got a new range of papers coming out in a couple of months and I'm not sure whether I should try them or not I'm a bit unsure so let's go back to should we try this one should we try this one see how that again this is one that's sold out but I'd like to be able to show you um, let's just do a, the dark color gray uh, let's go Uncharted Man <laughs> my favorite directly onto here and we'll just do it onto a plain white piece of paper and hopefully you'll be able to see quite a lot of that ink I'm not sure I've ever pulled with this one before I've done a gel pull with it before so we'll see I'm actually going to pull off some of that ink you don't want too much ink so just Braying over, and you may, don't let your brayer drag either. It needs to roll over. Right, let's see what happens if we put that on there. So again, the paper's not going to be usable. What size brayer? It's ten centimeters. It's my textures one, Simone. I do have chalk inks with yeah you can work honestly try Stacy try all your inks the only thing I'd say is stays on is going to stay on <laughs> it's not you're not going to get that off your gel plate if you use stays on so any other type of ink is absolutely fine right I'm really hoping this is working I haven't done it with this particular sheet my other textures papers, I think all the ones I've tried before have worked really well. Oh, I can see it. I can see it. That's still usable, isn't it? If you want a blue tone background. Right, let's get this pulled really quickly. I don't know, I don't know why I say really quickly. That's my anticipation. That's me being impatient, wanting to see what happens but you don't need to be quick because inks are oxide they're not going to dry on your plate anytime soon it would eventually but they're water based uh, water reactive so you can soon get them off right pressing really hard into all the nooks and crannies making sure you're getting as much of that print as possible yes that's a much you can see this so much better there we go love that really pleased with that one that's better. Is it right that when you're using paint for a print, you do always have to put a white layer of paint? Yes, because paint does dry, Stacey. So if I was to use paint, do my um, gel print, your paint's too dry to then pull it up again, whereas the inks stay down. That's why I like to do it with the inks. So if you do it, do this with paint, acrylic paints, you need a white paint or a gesso, clear gesso or a um, like a matte medium or something and that just reactivates the paint underneath okay so do we like that I really love that I think that is beautiful just in that one color is stunning isn't it um, how gorgeous would that butterfly look actually see that print would have looked gorgeous if I cut that out and put that on the wood grain that would be beautiful wouldn't it is there anything else that anyone would particularly like to see just I mean you've seen I'm just wondering if there's any other papers that I can try to pull with that you might have at home let's see um, I'm still here you want black tone really black tone uh, newspaper won't doesn't usually work as well because it's such a the way they print it, it doesn't sit on top that's why you want the glossy magazine papers I'm just gonna pop to Facebook and see um, so I've got another I've got another paper pad coming out soon shall I try one paper from that it's naughty but I'm going yeah I'm gonna do it I'm gonna try one paper now people what color would you like me to like to see me um, hang on I've just seen some questions photographs you could do photographs if they're printed with a laser 
printer, Julie. Actually, actual photographs are not so good. Now, you're not allowed to ask about this. I'm not even sure it's going to work yet. Which one am I looking for? Oh, that might be a bit small, actually. Should we do a photograph? I think the mess, the text in that might be a bit small. I'll need to experiment to make sure it's going to work. So, shall we do a photo from one of these, this magazine? Sorry, you were going to see a sneak peek of the collection coming up, but I'd probably get in trouble for that anyway. So, yeah, if you get actual photographs won't work um, because they're all glossy. The whole lot has got a gloss over it. But like I say, images in magazines, ideally you want images of people. They work quite well. Let's have a flick through and see. You want something with a lot of contrast as well. Um, do you know what? Should we look through a crafty magazine? I just had some delivered. Where's the last one I had delivered? I'm just going to duck down here. This one came through my door a day or two ago. Creative stamping. We could do Tony Derrick's face. <laughs> do you think she'd appreciate that? Might be a bit small. So see something like that, a lot of contrast would work. This is a glossy magazine, it's the glossy effect. So this would work. Um, I'm just going to go through the whole magazine now so you can see it. Or if, you, if you've got the magazine, you haven't actually got into it yet, maybe close your eyes for a moment. So you want images. Mind you, card making magazines are not the best for having pi pictures of people in, are they? Oh, they're gorgeous. So the, it's the black. Oh, do you know what? That's pretty. I don't know if any of that would work. It's a bit small, the detail's a bit small, but I'll bookmark that. We might come back to that and try that one. The Lavinia Stamps advert may work. Got some black there. Oh, that's pretty as well. So you've got lots of text in here. So all your old magazines, you can definitely use the text from. Um, and try the images as well. Try them, come on. I'd like a picture of a person. I'm not going to find one, am I? It's all cards. Can you imagine that? A card making magazine full of cards. Terrible. Okay, let's see what happens with this one. There's only thin, small bits of black in there, but we'll try. Shall we go with the dark purple sneak peek? Let's just do a little bit in the middle. blue on there still right now obviously if you're going to do something like this it wouldn't be for sale because these are other people's images so just say that and oh do you know what let's tear this one out I like this moon this one I'm just going to, whoops Tear it a little bit. Pop that on there. I'm literally just playing now. I'm just going to use the back of this to pick up my ink from around so I don't get really mucky fingers. Lift that all up. I say all, it won't be all of it. And then again, press that all down. I think that but the blue butterfly is my favourite so far. I think. There we go. Okay, so let's just see. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 I can see it. Can you see the owl in there already? Let's take... Should we put it onto the wood grain? Would that look cool? Press that down. So we can brayer. We can use our fingers. You will get mucky fingers when you're playing with a gel plate. But look, some of these... Hi Deb, don't worry. We've done lots of different gel plate pulls using uh, stamps, 
die cuts, um, pa pattern papers, magazines, all sorts. We've used oxides, we've used inks, and we've used... Oh, we haven't used paints, actually. I kind of show you the more approachable way of doing it. I know, that owl. Like I say, this is an image from another company. Uh, if you're doing it this way without purchasing the actual stamp, then please don't go ahead and sell your items. You can gift to friends, I'd imagine, but it's just an example to show you the technique. Just covering my back here, everyone. So really pressing that down. Let's see. I um, don't know how well it's going to show. Ah, it's a bit hidden, isn't it? It's a bit hidden. Never mind. Can you see it? And see the text. Should we lift this? Just with white. Just do. Let's see what we can lift up. And I'm not worried about going wrong either. I'm absolutely not worried about anything that doesn't work because, I mean, really, what have you lost? It's just a bit of ink and paper. Right, it's definitely in here. I want to get all that detail. Let's see what we've got. It's, oh, it's very pale. I can still see that in, on there, so... Just a very light spritz on the plate. I'm going to do a light spritz on here as well, on my paper. Let's just see if we can get that up. This, who was asking? I um, can't remember now, but this is where you'd probably, if you were using paint, you'd use your gesso or your white paint and really pull that all up. It's on there still I can see it I just can't get it off now so the only other option let's clean this because I don't want purple on there just water a bit of kitchen towel I'm gonna sneeze as well but <coughs> bless me sorry sometimes I say I'm gonna sneeze and that stops it <laughs> clearly not today right so that is well and truly on there so let's take a bright color let's go Chuck some salty ocean in there as well, shall we? Mix these all up. Yellow and blue, gorgeous. Well, it's not really yellow, is it? Because it was, well, crushed olive is more of a green, but it does come out very yellow. Whoops, I really should have stuck my mat down. Let's go onto a clean piece of paper. You hear that banging? That's what I put up with all day at the moment. Well, they're building two doors up. I'm hoping soon it won't be long until uh, until it's finished and they start working on the inside and it's quieter. But. I will be somehow documenting this, but I the room I'm in now is soon going to start to be built into a proper craft room. As you, a lot of you know, I'm in my garage since moving house. We haven't been able to do the craft room yet because we've only just got a kitchen in. So let's see. There's one. And let's pull one more and see if it pulls anything else off. I don't think it's going to. It's a good way to clean your plate though. Put ink down and just pull it up solid. I don't think we're going to get much more out of this. Da, 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 da. So yeah, this is soon, very soon going to be, yeah, no, that's as much as going to come off that. Right, lastly, I'm going to just show you a basic ink blending. If you're not confident with blending your colours together, um, I did it at the beginning for those who missed. You, you know your ink blending with your brushes. Now, I always say, bear in mind that this is uh, a plate that's got lots of nooks and marks in it. You're never going to get a perfect impression. What colours shall we blend together? I've only got a selection of colours here. Um, let's go say Peacock Feathers. So again, just as I've been doing the whole time, I'm going to put Peacock Feathers into 
uh, let's go into vintage photos. So say I want a background and I want these two colours into each other. So I do that, make sure my brayer hasn't got any other colours on it. And I'm going to start at one colour and just go sideways between the two and then start working down into my brown look at the blend between those and you can come up again as well just bear in mind when you get to here that brown is going to start coming up into the turquoise so it depends how much you want that to transfer you've then got this gorgeous blue and brown on your brayer which you can use stunning and let's just pull this as well should we do the little bit of water as well just makes it a little bit more watercolory and that is a word for me yellow orange and pink okay I'll do a yellow orange and pink last there we go so one day I'll find a photo of Sam Sam's face and do it with yellow orange and pink <laughs> get some anti-slip matte I know I need to I usually just do it directly onto my white. I've got a lot of videos to film today. I haven't got time to really be cleaning it afterwards and letting it dry. So that's why I put my uh, silicone mat underneath. So look, beautiful ink blending, not needing to use any brushes. I love the texture that you get in there as well. It's gorgeous. Okay, one more just for Sam. I'm gonna clean off the brayer. And just take all the blue and brown off because that's not gonna go very nicely. You see, I'm leaving things on there. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm taking the excess off, but the colour, the staining, is staying on there. It just, they work better. Right, so, picked raspberry, carved pumpkin, mustard, mustard seed. I'll show up the best, I think. So, yellow. Really bright orange in the middle and pink okay now because we're doing three colors what you ideally want to do is blend two again make sh make sure your roller is rolling and not dragging okay so I'm just going to go down to the orange line then I'm going to take that excess off so that I don't get too much in the way of pink into the yellow and then do the same this end right I'm getting some pooling on there but that's probably probably because I used the wet wipe on the brayer da, 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 da. surprise surprise I know Karen that's sand for you Sam's clearly not doing any work today. <laughs> Get her in trouble. Uh, let me just check over. Sorry, I've been stuck on book face for a while. Um, you've made this much easier to do with inks. It doesn't seem to be as messy. It's not as messy. Nowhere near as messy. Um, you're welcome, Stacey. Okay, so let's just pull this one last. There we go there's the three and then if you wanted to go ahead and do something like do 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 let's do like the butterfly hang on a minute let's just see what papers I've got left as I say these papers were they are sold out but should we do those ones there's quite a bit of black on those oh we've got this one do that you can do that over the top of your prints what color should I do this in I really liked that oh, we better do black otherwise it's just going to do you know what that's fine I'm gonna go into there I'm gonna go into there do, do, do. I just keep saying last bit last bit and then I do a bit more and this is the trouble with this do find I just keep playing I'm not sure how well this is going to show because I've I had yellow on my brayer still 
Wow, that's noisy. Apologies. Sounds like he's using a multi-tool and going through some metal or something. Okay. Oh, I'm pressing down really hard. Use my knuckles. Stand up if you need to. Just make sure your surface isn't slippery like mine. Let's see, have we got the print? I'm not sure. We're gonna do it anyway. We'll see what happens. Be good if you had some music on rather than humming to yourself if you hum anything like me. It's not good. I'm going to play with your gel plate today. It looks so fun. It is really good fun. Pick out all your papers. If they've got any sort of glossiness over the black areas of them, then try them on your gel plate. Definitely. I'm not sure on this paper. I'm pretty sure I've never done this paper before, so I don't even know if it's going to work. It has, but it's very faint very pale we've got the butterflies just in the background the text in the background there it's still pretty isn't it still nice because you could because this is orange i could cut that out and stick that over the top that would look really nice shall we quickly oh, shall i shall i shall i <laughs> right i'm not going to go around the bits i'm going to do it roughly to see what it'll look like i could do it with all three but the blue kind of throws it off a little bit let's just do the middle one if you have got the text in the background I'm pretty sure that camera's not going to pick, pick the text up but you have got the text now I'd cut around this I'd be a bit fussier with cutting around it but I quite like that I've got the grey tone on the butterfly so hopefully the background will pop a bit more behind it one two there we go Pop that butterfly over the top that looks pretty doesn't it because then you, you have got the shadows of the other butterflies over the top there um but still i think i think that was my favorite today i think let's just move things along a little bit so i think the wood grain the owl the owl is on there you can see that owl can't you so if that was just black ink onto white paper you'd be able to see it better but I did like the actual wood grain underneath. That was quite a cool effect. I'll be playing with that a bit more. Basic solid ink blending as well. Um, this colour combo background would be lovely to use with Phil's Papercraft Society Box. Exactly. Yes, he is very similar colours, didn't he? Um, what else have we got here? I've got all sorts. Let's dig down to... Oh yeah, that was the first one we did, the solid one. Oh, here they are. They're at the top the snowflakes as well so we've got a double layer there so we've got the pale background and then the stamp stamping onto the plate so you can stamp if you've got background stamps like um just text ones or patterned ones you can stamp into your inks that's what happens if you actually stamp into the ink or you can stamp into color so that's with a clean stamp in directly into ink that was my first pull with the stencils on with these little die cuts so masking off the ink and then took those off re-pulled it and we got that as well so we've got all sorts today haven't we so i hope you've had fun playing with that i love doing this now and then just having a bit of a play don't forget the links that i've pinned everybody take you to craft stash uh they're just affiliate links so i get a small small tiny percentage um for commission if you do purchase anything um, so much appreciated if you pop through those links if you need to and um, I'll be back next Wednesday again both YouTube and Facebook I'll be here um, and again let me know in comments not necessarily on this live but just let me know in my group Paper Crafting with Lou Collins on Facebook or drop me a message and let me know what you'd like to see in the lives because I'm always looking for inspiration um, okay everybody I think that's it for today lovely to have you with me thank you so much for joining me and I will see you again. Oh, I'm not about for the Friday Live on Craft Stash on, uh, on Friday. That will be Sam and Katie because I'm going off uh, for the afternoon off. So I'll see you again next week live, I'd imagine. So take care, everybody. Have a fabulous...